This video is sponsored by War Thunder. Back when I started this channel, I made a video about why skyscrapers are a bad idea. And they are. However, a few people disagreed with me. How will you solve the housing crisis without skyscrapers? They asked. You can't just put everyone in single-family housing. Such criticism showcased a very skewed, America-centric understanding of cities and urban planning. And they could be forgiven for that. Looking at your average, car-centric American city like Detroit, you might notice something funny. Can you see what's wrong? Here's Frankfurt, Germany for comparison. Do you get it now? In Detroit, the high-rise center immediately transitions into single-family home neighborhoods. In Frankfurt, the skyscrapers are surrounded by mid-rises, buildings that are between 5 and 12 stories tall. If we go further out, the mid-rise areas turn into multi-family home neighborhoods and only at the edges of the city do you get your single-family home areas still interspersed with multi-family development. And while mid-rises and multi-family homes are ubiquitous in European cities, they are often outright banned in America by local zoning codes. This is most often referred to as the missing middle, though the term does not include mid-rises, only buildings from duplexes up to smaller apartment buildings. The missing middle and mid-rises is a major problem for a number of reasons, especially during an ongoing housing crisis in many US cities. The first problem is transportation. People in the US used to have options. Bike, streetcar, train, tanks, planes, battleships, wait, uh, what's this? Oh yeah, War Thunder. War Thunder brings the most robust, all-encompassing vehicle combat ever, featuring more than 2,000 tanks, planes, helicopters and ships in online player versus player combined arms battles. The vehicle roster spans more than 100 years from the 1920s all the way to present day modern vehicles. Each of them is detailed perfectly down to the last bolt, which provides for fun and immersive gameplay. Instead of traditional hit points, the vehicle use dynamic damage models, meaning they take damage on their specific components or crew members which determines whether you survive a hit or not. Upon damage or destruction, a damage x-ray will show you exactly what happened to your vehicle. I've been playing more and more with planes recently, dive bombers and strike aircraft mostly, but I don't shy away from the occasional dogfight. In particular, I like the diversity of air battles. You don't have to go fight players in a PvP battle if you don't want to. You can also do bombing runs against targets or enemy computer-controlled vehicles. Hell, you can even shoot them with your machine gun. Also, the playing controls just feel fluid and natural, which is rare in most War Theme games. War Thunder is available for free on PC, Xbox and PlayStation, both the latest and previous console generations. Use my link in the description to start playing and get a large, free bonus pack of multiple premium vehicles, a premium account, boosters and more. Thank you for checking out War Thunder, they support me making more content for you. Now, back to the video. So the first problem that comes with banning mid-rises at multifamily homes is transportation. In much of the US, instead of mid-rises at multifamily homes, local governments incentivize sprawling single-family home areas. And by incentivize, I mean they ban everything else. These neighborhoods are car-centric by design. Houses are spread out, so transit stops cannot have good coverage. Commercial areas and amenities are far away, meaning the only way to get to them is by car. In sprawling, car-centric suburbs, everyone has to drive, leading to soul-crushing traffic that only gets worse each year. One thing that could help solve this issue is well-functioning public transit. But it's impossible to build it in such neighborhoods. What good is a transit stop if it's an hour walk away from your home? In multifamily and mid-rise areas, public transit suddenly becomes viable as more people live within convenient distance of stops, leading to actual ridership. This is how old tram suburbs were built in the US and they are some of the most sought-after areas to this day. In Europe, new neighborhoods are thankfully planned with public transit in mind, uh, usually anyway. There are exceptions, but new neighborhoods generally have both single and multifamily homes and some sort of bus or tram service. Unlike in the US, where you get the usual sprawling single-family home desert. And the best thing is, in areas with proper public transit and even bike infrastructure, more people will live car-free or at least they'll leave the car at home more often, leading to less traffic and less congestion. Thereby, everybody wins. The second problem of banning mid-rise and multifamily areas is business or the lack thereof. In sprawling, single-family home areas, residential housing is all you get, with commercial space clustered around unpleasant road arteries surrounded by oversized parking lots. If you want to go shopping, you can't just pop by the corner store and get what you need. You have to get in your car and drive a good 15 to 20 minutes to get to the one Walmart in your area. In contrast, you can turn multifamily homes and mid-rises into mixed-use buildings, meaning you allow people to have commercial or office space usually on the ground floor of the buildings. What this does is decentralize commerce, meaning instead of one enormous corporate-controlled shopping complex, you have lots of smaller stores owned by locals. 
But many American local governments simply forbid you from starting a business in a residential building. If you want to turn your garage into a small store or convert a ground floor section in an apartment building into a restaurant or something, the government often won't allow it. Why? Because of restrictive US zoning codes allowing for residential buildings only. This big government overreach stifles small businesses and forces you to shop at the giant, corporate shopping box by the highway. Not a good way to go. If time travelers arrived from the ancient or medieval era, their biggest shock wouldn't be our modern technology. Rather, that we aren't allowed to have residential space and commercial space in the same building. Building. The third problem with not allowing any mid-rises or multi-family homes to be built is the damage it does to society. Having to commute by car is expensive. The fuel, the maintenance, the insurance, the risk of accident, they all add up to a hefty sum. This is doable if you're middle class or higher, but anyone poorer will have trouble footing the bills. Especially if their only housing option in an area is a single family home. And they have to live in such a neighborhood, otherwise they'd be far away from their workplace. This creates a major, artificial hurdle in front of low income households. In addition, since starting a business from your garage is literally banned in most single family home neighborhoods, that's one less way you can escape from poverty even if you have a great business idea. But perhaps the biggest societal damage here is the loss of so-called third places. A third place is where you spend your time when you're not at home or at work. It can be anything from a cafe, a pub, a community center, a barber shop. Take your pick. It's a place where people from all walks of life spontaneously come together and mingle. In a local pub, for example, you might have a middle manager, a plumber, a pensioner, and a college student all sitting by the bar next to each other. This is important because proximity and contact create a bridge between different segments of society. Friendships are made, connections are established, and it's generally good for business. Turns out the middle manager is looking for a craftsman so they and the plumber can exchange contacts. Also, the college student is offering tutoring on the side and the pensioner does have a grandchild who's in need of just that. You get the idea. But the most important thing here by far is the effort mentioned bridge between groups. If you encounter members of another group frequently and have positive or even just neutral interactions with them, you are far less likely to develop prejudices against them. This keeps society together against the atomizing force of far-right propaganda networks looking to break society apart into different groups for their own political ends. Neighborhoods with multi-family homes and mid-rises are the perfect terrain for such third places and they help create a strong, cohesive society. More equal, as mobility is no longer put behind an auto-industry paywall, and more environmentally friendly, with cleaner air and quieter streets and courtyards that are safe for children to play in. They also make for great War Thunder maps. Quick reminder, use my link in the description to start playing to get the large, free bonus pack and join the battle. I'll see you on the ground, in the air or on the water, depending on your preferences. Now, thankfully, more and more cities, both in the US and Canada, realize the need for missing middle and mid-rise housing, and zoning codes are being reformed. And that's great, since both multifamily homes and mid-rises are the fundamental ingredients for creating pleasant, safe, walkable and bikeable neighborhoods reachable by quality public transit. Where, in addition, real estate will retain its value throughout the years, contributing to people's wealth in a significant way. Not to mention, prospective buyers will have a greater selection of housing to choose from. Neighborhoods with mixed, single-family, multi-family and mid-rise housing are just better in every aspect. It's time we went back to building those, instead of the usual, sprawling, single-family hellscape. Thank you for watching. If you like my content, you can consider subscribing to my channel for more videos like this. And I also have a Patreon link in the description, where you can even support me monetarily if you think my content is worth, well, supporting monetarily. And I'll be seeing you next time.